I love that tune, Steve. That's beautiful. I don't know where that comes from. It has a little bit. It's one of those. Well, I can only relate it to a commercial, but it's true. It has that Calgon take me away kind of feel. Yes. I feel like I want to kick back with an umbrella drink, but I don't drink. So I'll have orange yeah. juice or something in there. No, <laughs> no, they do have non-alcoholic. Yes. Drink yes. I, I like virgin pina colada. That's my favorite. Those are pretty good. So is the strawberry. I thought I'd pass that along. There you go. So anyway, hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. Alongside Jan, Jan from New York City Saves Money. Today, hey, Steve. Hey, Jan. <laughs> Today, we've got some tips that we want to share with you. And from what I understand, Jan, you've got some that you would like to. These are random. They're all different. And thank yeah. you, Steve, for having me on. Hi, everybody. Mm -hmm. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, You know, I have this tip. Where I, I love homemade meatloaf, Steve, but I also don't like a lot of a mess. So the first tip is I make my meatloaf, all the ingredients in one pan. Guess which pan? My meatloaf pan. I put everything in that meatloaf pan. First, I spray it with nonstick. As my oven is preheating, I put all of my ingredients in the one pan. Can I tell you? Cleanup is a breeze. So that is one of my tips, Steve. Now we're going to bring it back to you. Okay. Um, so I've got a good tip here that um, I want to mention to all of you. Oh. Well, hold on. It would be nice if I bring myself. <laughs> I got. I had to answer something on my phone at that same time, so that threw me off slightly. Yes. But I have an excellent tip here for all of you. Um, for those of you that do that still use a coffee filter, a paper filter, but let's say you run out of coffee filters, but you want to make a, you want to make a pot of coffee or if you have a percolator, you want to make coffee. What do you do? Oh no, I'm in trouble. I can't make coffee. Yes, you can. It just so happens. I have the answer. A roll of paper towels. So what you're going to do, I'm even going to demonstrate it. So this is a select size. So you're going to pull off a piece. I know in the percolator, what I do is I take it and I fold it like that. Now in the percol in a, in a coffee maker, this might be enough to set it down in there. But in a percolator, you'll want to fold it over again a second time. And then take your thumb and you're going to make a small hole in the middle so you can slide it down in the basket where you put the coffee. The only thing that's going to mess you up, and if you're good at guesstimating, you should be okay. My percolator has got a measure, two cup, four cup, and so on. When you put that down in there, that closes that off. You can't see it. But if you've made coffee enough times, you know about how many spoons to put in there. So if you don't have a coffee filter and you run out, use a paper napkin, paper towel. It does work. In fact, I used to, I used one this morning when I made coffee. That's great. But it, but it does work. I love it. So I'm next. <laughs> All right, this I love. Get two uses from one boneless chicken uh, cutlet or steak. Steak and chicken cutlets. The boneless type can be expensive by the pound or the beef can be expensive, but there's no reason not to get more than one use from it. Let me tell you something. I like to do this method and I am not great with a knife. I'm left-handed. I just like, it's like I have two left hands. However, even I can handle this. What I do is I partially freeze. I partially freeze the meat. Then when I want it, okay, that afternoon, I take my knife and I just go across and I butterfly it open and I get two. Yeah. So I get two out of it and it really, really is cost effective. Steve, many times the steak or the chicken is rather thick. So it's actually better when it's a little bit thinner like that. Yes, it is. And... 
another thing people forget. I'm not one that likes a thick cut of meat, whether it be steak, pork, chicken. I'm not, I like it about maybe about a half inch thick, maybe quarter to a half. Because who wants to sit there or stand there rather for over a half hour to cook a steak that's this thick? Not me. <laughs> you end up with a burnt steak on both sides and kind of raw in the middle. Not that there's anything wrong with medium rare, but it wouldn't even be that. So I'm all for that, cutting it down. You make more fillets out of it, more for your money. Uh, my dad, if I can branch on to your part for a second, my dad, um, I used to like filet mignon or tenderloin. And uh, yeah, it's pricey per pound in its exact state. But if you get say two or three fillets that's round like this and about yay thick, you can cut it down and get about maybe four, maybe five fillets of steak out of it. Amazing. About three, you've got five, 10, 15, about the size of your, and let me tell you, it's really good. You less than three minutes, your, your steak is done. You can eat it in its exact state as it is. You can put it on a bread. It, it makes a great steak sandwich. So you can have the, excuse me, the good steak and save money at the same time. Right. And then if you think about, okay, you, you spent $30 on a pack of tenderloin, but you see three, but when you cut it down, you got 15 if you have three pieces. So it's not as bad as people anticipate because you're getting more out of it. Oh. Okay, my next tip, I need to come back to the coffee maker for a second. Now, for those of you that don't know, and a lot of your restaurants are guilty of doing this, you can make hot tea or iced tea using a coffee maker. Just fill it up with water as you normally would in your filter basket. You can take the napkin if you want or don't, and set about eight or nine tea bags in there, close it up, turn on your coffee maker, and it'll brew a whole pot of tea. Now, to make iced tea, it's not that hard. If you have a plastic pitcher, you just pour that into it, add your sugar or whatever sweetener you like to use, mix that in while the mixture is hot, and then fill it up with cold water the rest of the way. That, that'll weaken it a little bit, but it'll help it cool off a little faster too. Then you just put the lid back down on it, sit in your fridge, and let it cool. You got, you got iced tea. You got real iced tea. I love that method. That's the real deal. No, because um, I always did say, if you go and buy any type of lemonade, iced tea, any type of pre-made drink, if you have more than three ingredients in it, you're paying for a lot of artificial. You should only have, in the case of tea, tea, water, and sugar. That's it. Same goes for lemonade, lemon, water, sugar, limeade, limeade, lime, water, sugar. If you have more than three ingredients in that drink, you're paying for a lot of filler and a lot of additives that shouldn't even be in there. So true. So true, Steve. Mm -hmm. I love that tip. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and now on my end, uh, keep a separate food storage container in the refrigerator, especially if you have a family. And let's say you serve your dinner family style. Let's say a platter of broccolis here, a platter of carrots there. And you have leftover sitting on the platters. You're not going to throw it out. I hope not. We hate food waste. So take an empty storage container when you're cleaning up. This is key. Put all those ingredients into that separate container. And at the end of the week, either you make a soup or a stew or a casserole or a veggie burger or something, or even just make a vegetable smoothie. Do not waste it. I dislike food waste and it's easy peasy cleanup as well. That's yeah. the savings. Yeah, it is. Now, this is another question similar to the one that I just mentioned. Let's come back to the percolator for a minute. You can also accomplish hot tea 
with a percolator. Wow. Fill it up with water, filter basket, put your tea bags in there, you know, around, put it all, put the lid, plug it in. Nice. And um, you can make hot tea or iced tea in the same fashion as you would in a coffee maker. And believe it or not, it actually turns out rather good. I did wow. It, I did it a few months ago because the coffee maker that I had decided to mess up. Yeah. But I still got my percolator. And it's electric. I've shown it to you guys in the past, Hamilton Beach. So I took the liberty, you know, and I made a whole pot of or perked a whole pot of tea. It's It's really good. That's amazing. I love it. And I'm sure good for camping too. Um, if you have an, if you have an AC outlet, because there's electric, you do have collators that you can set directly on the stove too. Oh yes. Well. Yes. 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 So Steve, this next tip for me, um, actually it's, it's saving money related and kind of sort of food related. So it's like all combined in one. Basically, take a moment and look back at last month's expenses regarding eating dinner or lunch or breakfast out. And if you can calculate it, think carefully about everything I'm saying. If you, if you could calculate those expenses, you may surprise yourself, maybe not in a good way, but you could just imagine, let's say you spent $100 on eating out last month without realizing it. That hundred dollars could have been in your pocket or five hours less of working, for example, or doing something different, differently than eating out. You know what, Steve, the easiest meals in the world are breakfast meals. I get it. Sometimes it's fun to go out to, you know, family as a group and eat out uh, on occasion. I get that. But for the mainstay to eat breakfast out can really be a silly expense in my opinion and in my mm. thoughts. But if a person looks back and doesn't realize how much they spent the previous month, they may rethink it when they do add it up. Well, it's coming back into the restaurant or into the food service thing. It's coming back. A lot of them got shut down or closed up because of the COVID pandemic, you know, about three years back. But they're coming back into effect again. Um, sometimes when it comes to breakfasts, um, I like to go to like a breakfast buffet and I'll explain why at the breakfast buffet, you pay a certain price, but you can go up and get as much as you'd like. I look at it this way for each plate that you get. If you pay $12 to go eat breakfast, but let's say you eat four plates. So each one of those plates costs you $3. And they offer uh, juices at no cost. It comes with a part of the, the buffet. So when you go in, you don't have to order a beverage. You got your juice right there, cranberry, grapefruit, orange, mm -hmm. whatever you want. So your drink is there already. So don't, so don't buy a drink because you got the – unless you want something – item specific and the and the drink itself could run you another 299 so you gotta watch but even at that the think about how many refills you get it breaks down it breaks down it breaks down it breaks down so if you want to eat out i'm not saying this is the only way but though a buffet is not a terribly bad thing to look at there are always ways to get around it Right, but the buffet will, will pro is probably the more cost effective, unless you. I'll tell you another place that's got good um, turnaround on the quantity that you get. Some of your Chinese restaurants have a good serving size. Sometimes, depending on what I get, they'll fill up a, a styrofoam thing a lot of the time full of food, fried rice, lo mein. I do like Mugu Gai Pan. My favorite as a kid was always pepper steak. And you get rice and everything. I've been known to be able to eat two to three times off of Chinese. So that right there is not quite as expensive as it looks. It, it, I guess it really depends on where you go and the amount of food you get. 
And also how frequently a person goes. And if yeah. they have a large family, there are a lot of factors. But for the fun of it, it might not be a bad idea to just calculate how much and know what you spent, not you personally, Steve, what a person spends. And not only that, and getting stuff delivered at home is just like eating out because you're also spending on a tip and gas. So for the person that's trying to save money, their bills aren't met. They shouldn't be eating out anyway if no. they're having trouble, right? Paying basic bills. This is a good experiment just for the fun of it even calculate how much you might have spent the previous month and ask yourself, what could I have done with that hundred dollars that I spent doing that? Maybe you would have bought a different outfit. Maybe you would have pay, uh, paid down a debt. It's just like more or less like a fun little thing to add yeah. up and see. Yeah. yeah, that that's absolutely true. Um, or you could take it and set it aside and don't spend it. There's, you there know, you go. You know, you got so many different ways. Um, Very true. See. Yeah. I think we're back to you. No, I'm done with my bag. Oh, you're done with <laughs> oh, that's right. You had the four. That's right. That's right. All right. My fourth one is for those of you that like um, oatmeal, cream of wheat, um, any type of hot cereal that you do. Well, a lot of the time it calls for milk. But if you don't have it, you can use a flavored coffee creamer. And what I will tell you that what that will do is it'll fill two voids. It'll fill the void of the milk. And it'll fill the sweet part of the sugar. Because when most people, when they get oatmeal or cream of wheat, or, when it's in their bowl, they usually add sugar. Well, that's already there. Of course, you want to test it and make sure it's to your liking definitely do that that's one place you can use flavored coffee creamer another good place to use it believe it or not is in french toast that fills the void of two places delicious let's say if you have a french vanilla which is one of the main ones i use it'll take the gap of the vanilla extract and the milk and it turns out pretty good yum so Keep that in mind if for any of you that like to make, you know, your hot breakfast type thing. I know it's not really that time of the year, although although oatmeal is really good for you anyway, so they say. Yeah. But, um, yeah, if, if you ever want to try uh, a little bit of a different method, that's actually a pretty good one that I do recommend. Mm -hmm. Um. I, again, I want to thank, I just want to say this. I want to thank all of you for, you know, coming to my channel. I really do appreciate it. But what would really be great is if you guys could do one thing for me, I would really appreciate this. way if you guys could definitely subscribe you know click the little bell beside it that way you'll get all the notifications you know steve i was going to remind the folks to please do that and it it's just like <laughs> oh, i'm sorry <laughs> oh that's fine like i said um we're pretty in tune anyway so it, it's fine but um i do have one additional bonus tip that i want to throw out there um, it's a pretty good one. I don't know how many of you out there that like to bake and, you know, use powdered sugar, but I have this little technique and you don't even have to buy powdered sugar separately. This, this little trick or tip rather works really well. Take granulated sugar. Go to your blender, take however how, however how amount of sugar you're going to need. Nutribullet it might even work. Put it in there, close it up, and run it for about 25 or 30 seconds. Take the top off, look down. You're going to have powdered sugar, so there's no need when you go to the grocery store, save that extra money that you would pay to buy an extra bag of powdered sugar when you can just take your granulated 
and do the same thing with it. It does work. I've tried it. I've done it too many times to count. It does work. It's amazing. I've done it myself. It's really amazing. There's no reason to panic if you're in the middle of a project that requires powdered sugar. If you have granulated sugar and you have a blender, it pulverizes it. Yes, it does. You know what? And, and it made me think, I, I hate to be Mr. Quick Tip over here, but it made, but in, in, in talking about that, it made me think of something else that I'm guilty of doing. And you know this about, no, about six years ago, I was trying to make some type of a chocolate pie or cheesecake. I don't remember what the it was. The pie. Was it the pie? Pie cheesecake. I remember this. Go ahead. But I didn't have any graham crackers in my possession. So I look in my cupboard and I see a box of Swiss, some type of mocha chocolate flavored Pop-Tart. Unfortunately, Kellogg's no longer makes that flavor. But back then, I said, okay, give me this. I put it in my Nutribullet, chopped it up, made it real fine, got some melted butter. Lo and behold... I was able to accomplish a pie crust out of those pie, those pop tarts. Yum. And I'm willing to bet you, you could probably do it with a cookie as well. Sure. Like a vanilla wafer, I bet would work pretty good. I know you can do it with an Oreo, an Oreo cookie. Oh, here's one. I never tried and I'm sure it's out there. I'd be willing to try this. You like peanut butter. I would be willing to try Nutter butter cookies ground up with butter. Like if you're doing a peanut butter pie, you could have a peanut butter, nutter butter crust and then put. That sounds way too good, Steve. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm not trying to make anybody hungry or their sweet tooth go. Oh, no, it. not at all. We'll never get hungry hearing about these ingredients. Nah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, that's really those well, the, the one I just mentioned, that was just something I thought of off the top of my head. But the granulated sugar was my bonus one. But but it does work, the, the pie you, crust thing. I you know, Steve, every tip is a budget stretcher. And, and you know what? It, it's creative. And, and don't forget, you know, we could just get very creative. I appreciate that you're having me on here today. Oh, no problem. I'm glad you could come aboard. And, I you know, I want to thank all of you for being here. I appreciate it. And, you know, take some of our tips into perspective. Uh, the granulated sugar one is a, is, a, is a slam dunk. The one about the pie crust, that's a slam dunk. I'm guilty of doing that. The, the paper towel thing for the filter, that's a slam dunk. I did that this morning. And then I like, you know, the ones that you mentioned as well with the, con the container. Yeah. So keep those into perspective. Um, because, you know, we're all here. I don't, it's not just us. It's all of us. Yes. Because if we can save money, yep. we want to pass it on. Especially these days, Steve. It's more of a challenge. It is. Yeah, with the way inflation's going. And hopefully, keep our fingers crossed, that's a whole other story. But maybe one day we'll start to see some prices dip back down. That would be great. So, But until then... Until then, I was doing it then. I'm doing it now. I'm probably probably doing it more so now than then. Nothing wrong with repurposing. Take a meal and make something else out of it. And that's the secret too, Steve. You're bringing up a good point before we go. No matter what's going on around us, inflation or recession, rates going up, this, that, and the other, if we follow the basic rules of common sense practices, living below our means, being frugal whenever we can, finding little ways to save and never dismiss the small amounts of savings. Yeah. We'll always be okay. Yes, we will. And what people don't realize, I know a lot of people, I shouldn't say a lot, but I know quite a few, I'll just put it that way, that does not care for leftovers. One little thing that they're overlooking, and you might vouch for this as well, a lot of the time I have found leftovers taste better. They do. <laughs> I guess because the flavors have had a chance to 
blend in a little yes. bit. Yes. So don't knock a, don't knock a leftover. And then when you go to repurpose it and make something else with it, or or even eat it in its, in its exact state. But if you make something else with it, you're going to have something that tastes really really good because of the flavoring. So. Exactly. All right, everybody. Um, I just you know I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Much appreciated, and um, you know be on the lookout next time when we're on and um i hope everybody has a great day and don't um, forget to smash down the like button for yes, steve's please. channel it's really important for the algorithm to know that you found value in his video have a good good one guys bye bye